today it gives me great joy to greet you in the name of our risen and victorious Lord Jesus Christ, but also in the name of the power of the Holy Spirit. We recall that day in history when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples of Jesus like tongues of fire. So in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I address you today. I want to share something I remember back in 1974. There was a television commercial for ultra bright toothpaste. Do you remember the commercials for ultra bright toothpaste? 1974, where in these commercials, the camera would zoom in on somebody's face and say, How's your love life? Well, you can relax today because I'm not going to ask you, how's your love life? But I am going to ask you a personal question today, right here and right now. My question for you is, how's your prayer life? I want you to think about that question. How's your prayer life? Surveys indicate today that most people in this day and age are uncomfortable praying to God. They are. They don't feel comfortable. They feel disconnected from God spiritually. Or they feel when they pray, they're dis they get distracted easily or they get confused. Uh, they just don't feel comfortable. Most surveys today indicate that most people are not comfortable in a moment of prayer. And here's the thing that may surprise you. Even the clergy who are surveyed recently, clergy say they're not comfortable in prayer. I think we got trouble in River City if the clergy have trouble praying, right? But that's what a lot of the recent surveys are uncovering. Now, why? Why is it so difficult for people to pray? Is it we're too hung up on the mechanics of prayer? Do we worry too much about, well, when I pray, should I fold my hands this way or should I fold my hands this way or should I kneel or should I lift my hands like this or maybe we're getting too confused about the mechanics of the prayer or maybe this one maybe we're getting too confused about the wording of the prayers when we speak to God how do we address God what words can we use can we convey what we're trying to convey can we put our concerns together in some logical fashion but either way you slice the pie, surveys are now revealing the truth. People do not feel comfortable with their prayer lives for the most part. And I find that very, very disturbing. However, if you look at what St. Paul wrote, according to our second reading for today, this problem of prayer has existed since the days of Jesus. I say problem because people have been uncomfortable praying since Jesus roamed the face of this planet. Look what Paul said in our second reading for today. Right out of the book of Romans, Paul writes, we do not, how to, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Let's stop right there. Paul is acknowledging the difficulty of prayer. He's saying it. We do not know how to pray as we ought. Sound familiar? The disciples of Jesus, the very inner circle of Jesus' followers, they said the same thing. They said directly to Jesus one day, they said, Lord, we don't know how to pray. Can you please teach us how we should pray? And then Jesus gave them the words that we now say is the Lord's Prayer. That came from a direct response to a question like, we don't know how to pray. How can we do this? So here's Paul now in the same century saying, we do not pray or know how to pray as we ought. Uh, but now look at the second part. It says, the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Do you get what Paul is trying to convey here? He's saying, you may be tongue-tied when you try to pray. You may stumble on the words. You may be uncomfortable in addressing God. However, the Holy Spirit takes over in your prayer. The Spirit addresses God in a way that you're not able. 
the Spirit takes over. It's like that country song, Jesus, take the wheel. Well, in prayer, it's Holy Spirit, take the wheel. So I'm about to say to you that when you get in your prayer chair, don't worry about the words. Don't worry about the phrases. Don't even worry about the specific thoughts. You know why? Because the key to prayer today is simply showing up. I'm going to say that again. The key to prayer is simply showing up. And I have a crude way of saying this. In prayer, it's not how you spit, but how you sit that matters. It's not about what comes out of your mouth. It's about sitting with God, sitting in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what makes a difference. Just being there with the Spirit. Because Paul reminds us here that the Holy Spirit gives us phrases or the Spirit speaks on our behalf. We don't have to worry about specific needs and concerns. I think that's very, very important to know. Because why? Today we are affirming the Holy Spirit. Today we're recalling the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came on the friends of Jesus. And I tell you this, it's the same Spirit that comes upon you whenever you sit in your prayer chair. And you might say, well, Pastor Jack, wait a minute. I never heard violent rushing wind and flames. I never saw flames coming from the sky when I'm praying. That's not the point. The point is that the Spirit comes in different ways and different forms. God says that when you sit in your prayer chair, the same powerful Spirit that came upon the disciples of Jesus is there with you. When you invite the Spirit of God into your heart during your prayer, the Spirit will be there for you. That is the beauty of this whole relationship of prayer. The Spirit takes over. And I've been saying this over and over again. Now, I return to my initial concern. How do you feel about your prayers? Are you uncomfortable about your prayers do you not feel that you're addressing God appropriately in your prayers? Don't worry. Don't worry. Somebody sent me uh, an internet message where there's two message boards. One message board is your message to God. The other message is God's message to you. Those of you looking at the monitor, you'll see these two message boards. The message you send to God is, Dear God, blah, 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 mumbo jumbo, and it's, it's all confusing. Why? Because you get distracted. You forget your train of thought. You, don't, you stumble over your words. You don't know what to say. It's all mumbo jumbo. But then look at God's message board to you. God answers back, Dear child, I know I love you, God. Look at that. In prayer, God is already saying, I know. I know your problems. I know your circumstances. I know your confusion. I know your pain. I know your suffering. I know your joy. I know what you're going through. And I'm here with you. The Spirit promises to be in you and with you when you're in your prayer chair and you don't have to stumble on the words. Just sit there with God. That's all you need to do. God already knows. And, and that's what I love about prayer because I remind you again of what Paul just wrote here. He says, the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, which echoes what Jesus said according to uh, Matthew chapter 5. Jesus said, and these are the words, he said, when you pray, God already knows what you need. Isn't that fantastic? He knows. So prayer is simply sharing, simply sitting, being with God. Now you know I'm always talking about my prayer chair. And for me, personally speaking, I need prayer like I need air. It's that simple. I can't begin my day without prayer. I'm just telling you what works for me. I'm not saying I'm better than everybody because I pray. I'm not saying I'm, I'm more spiritual. I'm saying for me, I need that prayer discipline. I need to be able to wake up in the morning and program my spirit for what God wants. 
I need to sit in that prayer chair early in the morning and say, Lord, show me what I need to do today. Lord, guide me throughout this day. Lord, help me to figure out this mess of life that I'm in right now. I need prayer like I need air. And you know what I do almost every single time? I get up early in the morning, I fix myself a cup of tea, and I sit with God. I invite the Spirit to come into my life, and I think about my day, I think about my problems, I think about other people, I think about people who are going through medical problems, I have a list of people that I lift up before God, but it's all in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I'm sitting there without a single word on my lips, without a single audible word. But I know that God is there. I know that the Spirit understands, just like Jesus said, God already knows. Nine times out of ten, I'll say, Lord, thank you for being with me today. For promising to lift me up and promising to strengthen me in this Spirit because I need you desperately. That's what I tell God every day. I need you desperately. I can't do this all by myself. And you know when I feel the presence of God in prayer? When it's really quiet. Reminds me of a story from 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19 about Elijah. You'll recall the story. Elijah was in a cave. He was looking for a sign from God. He was looking for a message from God. He was looking for the presence of God. So he's in this cave, Elijah was. All of a sudden, there's a violent wind that comes by. And then there's an earthquake. Then there's a fire that breaks out outside. But the Bible is very clear that Elijah did not hear the voice of God in the wind. He did not hear the voice of God in the earthquake. He did not hear the voice of God in the roaring fire. But no, when everything got quiet, then he heard the voice of God as a whisper in his soul. That speaks volumes, literally. Because when you're in your prayer chair, God whispers to your soul. In my opinion, prayer is so much more about listening to the whisper of God than it is verbalizing whatever we have to say. It's listening. The Spirit speaks quietly in your soul when you're in your prayer chair. I can testify to that. I've seen it and experienced it and felt it several times over. So how can we summarize this whole thing about prayer? Well, we can say that some of us are uncomfortable with prayer. Some of us don't pray as often as we want. We get distracted by life and we don't sit down. Some of us do pray and then we stumble over the words. But I remind you again, just showing up is the centerpiece of prayer. Just sitting quietly with God. Find a place where you're not going to be distracted. Make sure it's quiet. Don't have the radio on. Don't have the TV on. Divorce yourself from your cell phone for a couple of minutes and just sit there alone with God. Look at the creation and then say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, sit with me. Lord, I can't live my life without you. And I guarantee you, the Lord will speak. He'll speak to you. Just like the Spirit says, in sighs that are too great for words, you'll hear the voice of God. Marinate in the Holy Spirit when you sit in your prayer chair. That's all you got to do. Just relax. Reminds me of a song I learned years ago. I think it was at a Christian camp. The words are, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love. Send us power. Send us grace. Notice the words. You're asking the Lord to send to you in prayer. Love, 
power, grace. And you'll receive it. May you be blessed in your prayer chair. May you realize what a privilege it is to sit in the presence of the Creator of the universe. May you be blessed when you listen to the whisper of God. And to that I say, thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.